Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Bee Museum. Uh, today we're doing Discovery Reading. My name is Marin. Um, I've placed myself here next to our lovely black-footed ferret. We're going to get to talk about him a little bit because today we are going to talk about burrowing animals. So I've got two books about burrowing animals, and like I said, we're going to get to talk about the black-footed ferret a little bit, okay? So first things first, let's go ahead and get started with a book oh, about a groundhog. This is called Groundhog at Evergreen Road, and we have permission to read this um, with, by, uh, with permission from Scholastic. The book is by Susan Corman. Kind of cute little groundhog we're going to talk about. All right. Here we go, a little birdhouse. It is early morning and the sun is beginning to rise. Above the, above the brick house on Evergreen Road, bright streaks of pink paint the sky. At the bird feeder, two cardinals chatter back and forth. There are those cardinals. It is dark and cool when Groundhog wakes inside his burrow. His mother, three brothers, and sister are already awake. Do you guys know what a burrow is? Hello, thank you for commenting. Okay, a burrow is the underground place that the animal sleeps. So there we have little groundhog in his burrow. 10 weeks ago, when groundhog was born, he weighed only an ounce. He had no fur and couldn't open his eyes. Now, Groundhog weighs almost four pounds. His coat is grayish brown and a bit of red on his belly. His legs and bushy tail are black. There's a close up on our friend Groundhog. You can see his little red belly, his black fur. Very cute. All right. Groundhog blinks as he follows his mother into the bright sunshine. During the first six weeks of his life, Groundhog drank only his mother's milk. Now he eats clover, alfalfa, and other tender grasses on his own. Groundhog hurries past his family in search of his morning meal. He makes his way across the wide lawn behind the brick house. Soon, Groundhog spots a new treat in the vegetable garden, ripe green beans. Do those green beans belong to Groundhog? All right, Groundhog creeps closer to the vegetable garden. As he eats the delicious green beans, he stops to look around every few minutes. With his sharp eyes, he checks to make sure that no predators lurk nearby. The red fox, hawk, and coyote are especially dangerous to Groundhog. Bang! A sudden noise pierces the quiet morning. The back door of the brick house opens and a large dog lumbers outside. Her metal tags cling together as she trots towards the vegetable garden and Groundhog. Oh no. Groundhog rises on his haunches. The dog sniffs the ground and the air then spots Groundhog. She barks twice and bounds toward him. Let me show you this little picture. This is what it means when they're up on their haunches. They're up on their back legs looking around for danger. Groundhog immediately lets out a loud, shrill sound. The dog freezes, startled. Groundhog whistles again. This time, Groundhog's defense does the trick. The frightened dog rolls around and races back toward the house. There's Groundhog making his scream. Called a whistle. Once the dog is safely inside, Groundhog begins to eat again. When he's finally full, he waddles toward the burrow, but Groundhog is not returning home to his mother. It is time for him to dig his own den. There you go. Groundhog finds the right spot for his burrow at the edge of the yard. 
He uses the claws on his front paws to dig and the claws on his back paws to kick the loose dirt away. Soon he reaches a thick tree root. He gnaws through the root with his four sharp incisor teeth and continues tunneling downward. Okay, so let's take a look at this picture. So he's using his front paws right here to dig the hole. And then all the dirt that comes off, he's using his back legs to kick it away. And when he gets to a tree root, like this one right here, he uses his incisors, which are his front teeth and his bottom teeth. He's got his top two and his bottom two, and he uses them to chew through the root to make a nice tunnel. There he is. Groundhog's new home will be more than a simple tunnel. When he is dug about six feet underground, he begins to carve out a sleeping chamber. He carefully lines it with dry leaves. Next to his bedroom, he digs a special toilet room. So they keep their bathroom away from their bedroom. Do you see any other burrowing animals on this page? Boop, boop, right uh, there. Hmm? Got a little worm. Those guys are important to burrowing as well, and they can serve as a really tasty food for some burrowing animals. So he goes, he's digging. Now, Groundhog begins to work on another entrance to his tunnel. This will be an escape route. Groundhog's escape route, or plunge hole, heads straight down into his den, giving Groundhog a way of quickly escaping from his enemies. So he'll have a front door and a back door to his den. Oh, look at little Groundhog. He's sleepy now. It is late afternoon when Groundhog finally finishes digging. He is tired and ready to eat again. Slowly, Groundhog makes his way back toward the brick house. This time he finds clover and dandelion greens in the yard. On the way back to his den, Groundhog spots a pile of smooth rocks. Lazily, he stretches out on the cool rocks to rest. Sleepy little Groundhog. A sudden whistle rings through the air. Within a second, Groundhog is up on his hind feet again. He recognizes his mother's cry, a sign that danger is near. What do you guys think it could be? Maybe it's that dog again? Or maybe it's one of the other things that he mentioned. Let's see. <gasps> Ooh, there we go, it's a hawk. A moment later, Groundhog spots the threat. Just above the treetops is a hawk. Her wide wings extended, she dips and swoops, searching the ground below for a meal. Luckily, Groundhog isn't far from his burrow. He darts toward his plunge hole. By the time his mother whistles again, he is safely hidden below ground. So there he goes, just right here. There's Groundhog, there's his hole. And right there is the hawk. By now, dusk is beginning to fall on Evergreen Road. As the sun sinks below the treetops, Groundhog pokes his head out of his burrow to make sure that the threat is gone. The early evening air is still and quiet. The hawk is gone. Groundhog is safe. Back in his cozy burrow, he will soon fall fast asleep. The end. So there we got to see the life and the day of a groundhog. Pretty cool. So there's our friend, the groundhog. Now the interesting thing about burrowing animals, we got to see that here with groundhog, is that lots of them will create their own burrows using their, their paws and their claws that they have. So you can see if we look at this picture, he's got really sharp little nails that help him to really dig. And then he's got those really big teeth, really sharp, teeth that help him to chew through things like tree roots or other roots that he finds. Now, groundhogs, if you notice, what was he eating during that whole time? He ate some dandelion greens that he found, like these ones right here. He found some dandelions and some clover, but he also was eating green beans from somebody's garden, right? So lots of people see groundhogs and other things like prairie dogs as pests because they'll go and eat the, the food that people are trying to grow. So here is, I've got a little, I've got a little prairie dog right here. There's the prairie dog. 
So this is how big they get. They get pretty big and like I said, just like the groundhog, they've got these little, they've got long claws that they use to dig into the dirt. Um, so they create their own burrows, but there are some animals that live underground that don't uh, create their own burrows. Some of them actually borrow burrows that have been used by other animals. So let's say if a prairie dog made a burrow with his, excuse me, I have hiccups. <laughs> if a prairie dog made one with his sharp claws and then abandoned it because he's like, mm, this spot's not so safe or oh, I'm not as much food here as I wanted. And so he leaves or he gets eaten, another animal might take it. And the types of animals that burrow might surprise you. We're gonna look um, at another book in a minute here, but first I wanna talk about the prairie dog and the black-footed ferret. Now we have here our black-footed ferret. Um, they are highly endangered animals. And the reason is because of these guys. This is their food. They like to eat prairie dogs. But like I said, prairie dogs are seen as a pest to a lot of people. They will try and eat food and they'll uh, eat the roots of things that you're growing. So then you, if you were growing something and they eat the roots to it, it's like, oh, well now it's, it's totally gone. It can't survive without its roots. And these guys are sometimes really hard to get because they don't live above ground. They live underground, they're big colonies. So if we have a whole bunch of prairie dogs living underground, they can be really hard to find. You have to dig up the whole thing to find all the prairie dogs. Now black-footed ferrets are really good at catching prairie dogs. Um, but if the prairie dogs, if we start getting rid of them because they are pests, some people even will use like, um, like a rat poison on them because they're like, this is a pest, I don't want it. But then if he eats it and then the black-footed ferret eats the poisoned prairie dog, that's no good. There's also a disease um, that was going through the black-footed ferret uh, community, the, all the animals. Um, and scientists were working out ways to try and give them vaccines uh, so that they could uh, avoid that illness, that disease, um, and continue to bring down the prairie dog population. So black-footed ferrets are super cool. You can definitely look up lots more fun facts about the black-footed ferret um, and about prairie dogs. Uh, but for now, we're gonna read our second book. Uh, this one is called Under the Snow. So, uh, I know it's not snowy outside right now. It is far from snowy outside, but this gives some good examples of animals that burrow. Some of them only burrow, uh, the ones in this book, some of them only burrow in the winter when they're hibernating, but some of them burrow uh, all year round. So we'll get to see a little bit of both. Um, we also might get to see, I don't remember exactly if it talks about things that hide their food. Um, so sometimes things burrow simply to just stick their food in it, like a squirrel or a chipmunk. They'll make a little tiny burrow or they'll find a burrow and they stick all their food in that hole and then they remember where it is so they can come back to it. So let's read our book. Under the Snow by Melissa Stewart. Oh, and we have permission to read this from Peach Tree Publishing. Okay. And maybe this will help you uh, feel cool down a little bit since this one's about nice, cool, snow, wintry times. In the heart of winter, a deep layer of snow blankets, fields, and forests. Oh, sorry. A deep layer of snow blankets, fields, and forests, ponds, and wetlands. Look at all that snow. Oh, it's hard to remember snow like that sometimes when it's so hot outside right now. You spend your days sledding and having snowball fights, but under the snow lies a hidden world. Let's see what's underneath the snow. Under the snow, in a field, dozens of ladybugs pack themselves into a gap in an old stone wall. You guys see those ladybugs? In the wall there. And below them, a snake rest in a hole all its own. Okay, so we've got the ladybugs right there. We got the snake. Now ladybugs don't normally live um, underground or in holes, but during the winter they have to protect themselves from the cold. And same thing with the snake. 
So he's hibernating. And there are lots of kinds of snakes that use burrows of other animals to protect themselves, especially in the desert where it gets really hot. So it can be when it's really hot or really cold. Voles spend their days tunneling through the snow. When they find a young tree, they slowly strip off layers of bark and eat them. So there, there goes a little vole. It's similar to a mole and they, they dig through the snow or dig through the earth. So those are normally tunneling animals, burrowing animals. Below the ground, a chipmunk snoozes for a few days at a time. Between naps, it snacks on the nuts and seeds stored in its burrow. So there you go. This guy can sleep there, but he's also stored lots of winter snacks uh, to help him get through the whole season. Under the snow in a forest, a morning cloak butterfly takes cover in a pile of brush. Inside a rotting log, a centipede and a bumblebee remain silent and still until spring. Lots of insects living in these places. Did you know that insects will live in burrows sometimes? Even bees, um, not bumblebees or honeybees, but there are certain bees and wasps that will actually create holes in the ground or take over holes in the ground and make their nests there. Pretty cool. A wood frog nestles in scattered leaves on the forest floor. I'm gonna point out the frog. He's right there. It kind of blends in. It can freeze solid and still survive. That is so cool. Not far away, a woolly bear caterpillar spends the winter curled up in a tight ball. That's a caterpillar. And do you see which animal is up top not burrowing? We got our deer here. They don't burrow through the winter. They find different bark and food and things like that. They're able to stay warm enough because they're nice and big animals. Lots of small animals have to stay underground to keep warm. Just below the ground, a spotted salamander waits out the coldest months of the year. Deeper down, a woodchuck sleeps soundly all winter long. Its heart rate drops and its breathing slows. The animal gets all the energy it needs from its thick layer of fat. And that's an important thing actually too about burrowing is the reason that so many animals do it is because it is, um, the dirt underneath uh, stays a pretty, the same temperature all year round. It stays pretty much the same. So if you burrow a few feet under and it's a really, really hot summer day, you're gonna burrow a few feet under and it's gonna be nice and cool underground. But if it's a really cold winter day, you're gonna burrow underground and it's still gonna be the same temperature, which felt nice and cool in the summer, but now feels nice and warm in the winter. So. That's, it's a good temperature control to be underground. Under the snow in a pond, bluegills circle slowly through the chilly water. They don't have enough energy to chase the water boatmen swimming by. These are the water boatmen and these are the bluegills. A carp rests quietly on the muddy bottom it isn't even tempted by the water striders lying just a few inches away. Buried in the mud, a frog and a turtle wait out the winter. They never move and they barely breathe. Look at that, they're buried. So even under the pond, there are some animals that are buried beneath the mud and the dirt. Under the snow in a wetland, a beaver family huddles together inside a cozy log lodge. When they get hungry, they swim to their food storage pile and munch on some sticks. There's the beavers. It's kind of like a burrow. It's not quite underground. They kind of make their own underground by building a dam and a, a little lodge, huh? But even on the coldest winter days, red spotted newts dodge and dart, whiz and whirl just below the ice. As time passes, the sun's rays slowly grow stronger. 
Each day is a little bit longer. Animals living in fields and forests, ponds and wetlands begin to get ready for spring. And so do you. The end. There's a cute little, we can see our chipmunk right there. And the little silk butterfly that we saw. All right. So that had a ton of different animals that live in burrows or underneath the ground during the winter. And like I said, some of those animals continue to live underground all year round. So some of them like the, um, we know that chipmunks and squirrels, like I said, they don't live underground, but they use their underground burrows to store all their nuts and all their seeds and things for the winter. So that's when they wake up and they're feeling kind of kind of snacky, they have something that they can eat, right? And then there were some uh, that only burrow, that only find a nice warm little hole during the winter. Um, things like the ladybugs or the butterflies. Uh, usually they don't have to uh, be underground until it gets a little too cold for them. So that is all for our uh, discovery reading today. Thanks so much for coming to this, guys, uh, for watching. Uh, feel free to uh, comment any questions or interesting facts that you have below. If you do choose to go look up some cool facts about the black-footed ferret, go ahead and look those up. Comment them down below uh, so that we can learn a thing or two together. Uh, and otherwise, you have a great rest of your week and a good weekend. We'll see you guys later.